All right, welcome to Worldviews Conflict. My name is Luke, and um, let's just make sure we're all good to go. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm a little more clear now. Um, everything seems to be up and working. Make sure the audio is good. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, my name is Luke. This is Worldviews in Conflict. And in this channel, if you would consider subscribing, we talk to a variety of different people with different worldviews, different belief systems, a variety of different types, which we're going to be uh, discussing today. This is my second live stream of the day because the first one didn't work out in terms of quality, but that's okay. We're going to plug through on this one. Um, today, I wanted to be talking about um, apologetic methodology and how can we meaningfully respond to every worldview without knowing every little nuance about every little thing. And um, I'm speaking mainly from experience, not as an expert. So let's uh, dive in and I'm excited to go through this with you. Again, um, we just address th different worldviews, different perspectives on the world and how we view it, lenses in which we see the world through on this channel. And we, um, I come from a Christian background, meaning that I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, and that no one can come to the Father except through him, uh, as he said, and <clears throat> and that he is uh, God. I am um, I am Trinitarian, and, <laughs> and um, I do believe uh, in uh, just biblical Christianity, and I believe that the biblical worldview is uh, the only meaningful way to understand the world in which we find ourselves in. Now, that might sound amazingly ignorant and really, really challenging for a lot of you at home or whoever you whoever's watching this right now. And so um, I'm, I'm so happy you clicked on this video because, well, I'm going to be basically giving breaking down how I have these conversations and hopefully to encourage you to do the same thing. That is my ultimate wish and hope and goal for this live stream. And so again, thank you for tuning in. This is Worldviews in Conflict. My name is Luke and let's dive in. So so there's a lot of um, uh, different videos online about how to approach atheists for, or um, any belief system and how to respond to it from a Christian worldview. There's a lot of um, amazing, amazing people that fight um, an amazing fight for the Christian faith, and they uh, they give it all they got. They give it all they got, and that it's so encouraging and so amazing to listen to, and you can gain all their arguments. You can work hour upon hour just working through their arguments, really trying to just get a good scope for um, for how to respond rationally, logically, reasonably with um, unbelief, and specifically uh, from a Christian worldview, how to respond to that using a biblical worldview, and what a Christian would say to say um, arguments like, can God make a rock bigger than he can lift and all the rest there. Now, <clears throat> um, those those questions can be, um, give a lot of people a lot of pain, a lot of hookups, uh, and a lot of Christians especially um, don't have time to work through a lot of these issues. And to that, I'm, I have to say, that's okay. You're totally okay as a Christian to, you don't have to be equipped in every single worldview to address every single worldview. Now, before I get started on that, I want to say that studying with different worldviews is incredibly um, helpful. I will, I, I'll say that right out of the get go. It's incredibly helpful. I do recommend it, um, specifically when you're talking with anyone that appeals to an ultimate authority outside of themselves. Now, that kind of sounded weird. What did I mean by that? Um, I mean anyone who says I, I am not the ultimate source of truth, but your God, your God isn't either, and um but my god my god is and so you instead you christian you should abandon what you believe and come and follow my god now that would be appealing to a um to a a, a different authority and that is specifically um maybe a, just a slightly different conversation than um other conversations you might have with an atheist or someone that has um, some different presuppositions now, um, this is going to be a, just a quick, quick live stream in, um, in terms of how to address these things. And so don't think of this as the end all be all meaningful um, reason for believing Christianity and then every other argument is invalid. But rather, I want to I share some things that have helped me to get on the street that might encourage you to do the same. 
especially if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, listen to my arguments very, very closely. I want you just to cycle through them. And I would ask you to just humbly consider what I'm about to say, um, that it's not uh, like coming from a place of hatred or a, a, of a place that is belittling you. Because I believe all people are made in the image of God and your worth is um, a found in the, the worth that is like derivative from your creator. And um, you're, you're worthy of uh, respect and all the rest there. And so um, just if you're an unbeliever listening to this, thank you. Um, and I just consider what I have to say and think about it and respond meaningfully in the comments. I do enjoy those. So thank you so much. Um, anyway. So let's use atheism as the number one example about how I respond to everyone fundamentally. But atheism is um, drastic unbelief. And I think um, it's pretty, pretty stinking common in, um, in our world still, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of, kind of like, it was the like minority view for a long time. And it's kind of made some resurgence. Then there's like atheistic festivals and uh, festivals, <laughs> um, conferences and, and all the rest there. And you have your like predominant atheists that, um, people point to all the time as like big thinkers, which is, you have your, uh, Dawkins, you have, um, you know, <clears throat> just, uh, oh, no, I'm going to forget all the names cause I don't research them. Um, I I'm bad with names, but, um, ideas, I, I really do focus on ideas. And so, um, you have your Dawkins primarily is like one, the person that I'm very familiar with and I've actually worked through a lot of his material. And <clears throat> I think, um, I think if people actually slowly worked through his material, you would find some foundational flaws. But that this isn't a video about Dawkins, um, rather about just approaching atheism in a meaningful way in a short amount of time. And so um, as a Christian, I have adopted um, a, a presuppositional approach in my apologetic methodology. Now, those are two big words, um, presuppositional. All it means is that I pre, I pre, right, pre, um, before, I pre suppose a truth and not my truth, but a truth about an individual before I actually engage them in a conversation or a topic. I presuppose a truth and I would say I presuppose God's truth over what they say before we even get the conversation started. And so, um, that would be my presuppositional stance, right? Um, I presuppose God's truth. I presuppose my biblical worldview. I don't abandon my biblical worldview for the sake of a conversation. Whereas um, <clears throat> apologetic is simply, um, well, it's a root word coming from the word apologia, meaning kind of like a defense or a um, apolo apology, kind of but not in the way we would say that, but rather it's like a... Um, it's just a, a reason why. So an apologetic is a defense. It is a um, hold back uh, the onslaught of argumentation. And so um, there's different methodologies in terms of how you do that in the Christian world, in the Christian circles. You got your evidentialists who um, kind of like start from a neutral standpoint and build up to God slowly over argumentation and then weigh the pros, maybe the cons. And then you know, eventually we'll get to a uh, conclusive place where we can uh, figure out if God it, of the Bible is real. And I think that's kind of the majority view, at least in my perspective and in my experience. And so, and that's where I was actually before I switched to a presuppositional um, apologetic methodology. And once I did, once I did, um, it gave me the confidence to go speak to people and um, share the gospel. And so that is uh, the main point of a presuppositionalist is presupposing God's truth and um, abandoning neutrality uh, for the sake of being obedient and honoring Christ as Lord in your life, even in your um, apologetic, even in your defense of the faith. And so all of uh, the title you probably saw, the title's really broad, really lengthy, very um, heady, very intellectual. You could go a uh, hundred different routes with how to respond to all these different belief systems. I've spoken with people that have said, I claim Norse mythology and all the rest there. And this apologetic methodology does work with every single belief system because it presupposes God's truth over the atheist truth, right? And that's that's so that's so cool. That's so amazing. And um, 
And in terms of atheism, getting back to atheism, atheism foundationally is a materialistic worldview that presupposes, and every worldview has the presuppositions, but presupposes that um, this world is meaningless, purposeless. Ultimately, I'm not saying you don't have meaning or purpose, but in this worldview, you ultimately, at the end of all time, um, like, are in a materialistic world. And so this universe came about, we don't know exactly how, um, but it started from nothing. There was a beginning and we're all products of the big explosion stardust. And ultimately there's, and it didn't have us in mind. And so um, all meaning and purpose is really derivative of a societal evolution and, um, you know, philosophers or fish to philosophy or fish to philosophers kind of methodology in terms of atheism. That's how I would kind of sum it up and ask atheists a lot when like foundationally, and we're talking about foundations, right? What we're standing on when we're arguing for anything, what is our root? What is where, where, where are we rooted in? Atheism is founded in a materialistic world that didn't have us in mind. And so, um, as a Christian, how I would approach atheism, and this is, you're going to see a connection here. Um, how I approach atheism is simply, <clears throat> um, holding them to their worldview and then presenting mine and then ending the conversation and trusting God to work in that. That sounds insane. Um, but I believe it's biblical that you don't answer a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. And, and then you answer a fool according to them, and let, unless lest they be wise in their own eyes, right? That's what um, the Proverbs say. And so you do answer the fool according to their worldview. It's kind of how I would read that. Um, read them to, you answer them according to their worldview to show them the foundation that they stand on isn't solid. Meaning that we inherently know and we inherently believe that we have a conscience, conscience, con, meaning with, and science, knowledge, that of right and wrong, which separates us from the animal, from the beast. But we can't just assume it popped up out of nowhere and that's okay. Rather, we should, um, we should question where it came from and why. And if there is a moral standard outside of ourselves, where is the, the line that is perfect? Because, right, even though we have um, everyone has a view of morality that's a little bent, maybe a little bit, it assumes that it's in reference to a standard above the bent line. You wouldn't know it's bent unless there was a straight line. And that's kind of a, like a mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis kind of argument, which is a, leaning on a more evidentialist. But we presuppose that people have a conscience, that people actually know right from wrong, and that um, <clears throat> and that you can actually speak to their conscience. And then for an atheist, what they're going to be doing consistently is bringing about <clears throat> this conversation um, about like moral faults within like Christianity per se, uh, or perceived moral faults, or um, or they're going to be talking about like people as if they're more than just stardust. And so in the conversation with the atheist, all you're doing is reminding them of what they believe because they're going to refute themselves. They're suppressing it. But that suppression of truth is going to pop out in who they are. They're image bearers of God. And so in my apologetic methodology, it's holding the individual in front of me to the worldview that they claim to have. So when an atheist brings up human value, worth, and dignity, I have to say, why? Where does that come from? And they don't have an answer. They don't. And then when they start to bring it up, remind them gently, calmly, respectfully remind them, hey, man, like you said, you're an atheist. Why are you treating people or why are you talking about people like they have some meaning beyond stardust, beyond a rock, beyond the evolutionary process that didn't have you in mind? Like, why do you keep speaking about people in a way that it seems like they're they're worth more than that? <laughs> and and um, and we know as Christians, they intuitively know that. They are worth more than a rock. They are worth more than a cloud or, you know, just a piece of grass floating by. They're worth more than that because they're made in the image of God. 
<laughs> and that ultimately that message carries a weight and a power that testifies to who we are and that opens up the floodgates for the gospel for the good news of Jesus Christ suffering on the suffering on the cross living life we couldn't uh, resurrecting on the third day and then if we turn and trust in him we have eternal life as a free gift and so <clears throat> that's how I do it I don't break down all the evidences for the Christian worldview. Rather, I just trust what the Bible says, trust that the Spirit's going to do his job and call people to him, testifying about the Son, pointing people to the Son, like, look, look, go, go, stop, stop doing the craziness that you're doing and pointing consistently to um to jesus and so what i do in the atheist in an atheistic conversation is consistently hold them to their worldview and present the gospel hold them to their worldview present the gospel again hold them to their worldview present the gospel again while praying the whole way through and now now maybe that kind of makes sense and i would challenge you to think through that and um if you want any like uh amazing resources to look at that further and, and particularly with uh atheism uh look into uh apologia studios they posted a debate um i think they have two debates but they're very similar because they use the presuppositional uh methodology in both of them Look up uh, Apologia, athe Atheism Debate. Apologia spelled A-P-O-L-O-G-I-A -A um, Studios or Apologio, Apologia, <laughs> Apologia um, just by itself. And you can watch that debate. And they actually use the presuppositional um, standpoint in the midst of a conversation. And you can kind of see it worked out and hashed out and how the atheist responds. And it's incredibly informative and very powerful. And it encourages me a lot. Those guys do some amazing work. And them, like Ray Comfort and a few other guys, like um, Preston Perry and his work on the street, like those things have definitely inspired this channel. <laughs> if you don't know who any of those are, just start typing them into uh, the YouTube search bar and get connected because it's so powerful. Anyway, um, let's talk about people that appeal, appeal to an authority. Now, we're lumping in Muslims, any um, pagan worshipers, Norse gods, Wiccan, um, you know, spiritualists, relativists, uh, um, pluralists. We're going to be lumping in here Muslims, even um, people that deny Christ in the Jewish faith, Judaism, um, all the rest here, we're going to be beginning to like lump these kind of people in with my methodology and how to speak with them. And even Roman Catholics, <laughs> I, I have a new, uh, I've met a new Roman Catholic recently, we had long, long conversation, and it went this route. So yeah, um, how can I uh, address these people? If they all believe such a, a variety of uh, different things? Like, how do I even begin that conversation? Well, here's the thing. And it's a beautiful truth. I think Vody Bachman one time said this in um, his presuppositional kind of talk. He said, you know, it's okay that you don't believe or that you don't know everything about every religion as a Christian. Rather, it's okay to know just what you believe because really it's what you believe. You don't believe those other religions. <laughs> And it seems like such a dumb, simple truth. But yeah, it's true. And so if we believe that Romans 116, right, that the um, the power, like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe first to the Greek and then to the Jew, or uh, first to the Jew and then the Greek, flip those. Um, <clears throat> if we believe that, if it is the power of God, then it, it doesn't come in word or in deed only, but rather with power and conviction when we bring the gospel to the people. If we believe that, then we are just ultimately pushing towards the gospel in the conversation. We're not necessarily looking for the long rounded intellectual debates. Now, is that an accept? Is that is that a reason to not be rational or logical in the conversation or respect someone's viewpoint? No, not at all. Um, I would actually suggest that you do some research. If you run into someone and you don't know what they believe, it is meaningful and impactful to understand where they're coming from. And especially if you build a relationship with them, 
that's incredibly, incredibly important. But in starting the conversation, you say, say you just um, start up a conversation with a guy at the dog park, you brought your dog, they brought their dog, asking about your life, you're asking, they're asking them you about your life. And, and so now we're just kind of getting into the nit and grit of the conversation. And it's like, man, like, I'm actually a Christian, I, uh, I believe all these things. And, and they start asking you questions, because say, let's say uh, they're uh, let's go extreme, uh, practicing, uh, hardcore devil worship with like Wiccan, like, uh, pagan gods, um, even has some like Norse mythology in there. And, um, and, uh, maybe with like a Roman Catholic background, let's just make up a really interesting person. <laughs> um, well, how would I begin to speak with, with that individual presuppositionally the same way I would with the atheist? simply trusting in god's word trusting that the spirit illuminates and that i don't have to know every little thing about this guy but rather i can know what god's word says and trust in that and that be okay and i think that's the beauty of actually um, a, a faith that is real and true and is not i'm not threatened by beliefs that i don't know anything about <laughs> and so um yeah yeah i would i would first and foremost probably say that and then um, how I begin to address this person is asking, are you a good person? The whole Ray Comfort thing, asking, are you a good person? Have you ever lied, stolen, anything, all the rest? Our conscience testifies to this moral law, the Ten Commandments, and um, it warrants a judgment. And if God is holy, how could we ever measure up? The answer, we cannot. And that ultimately he lived a the life in perfect submission to the father that we could not die the death we deserved resurrected and then if we turn from our sins and trust in him we have eternal life as a free gift and not only as eternal life as like the main objective but rather we get to be with him we get to be reconciled to god and that ultimately is the thing that should excite us the most and so with anyone like that you, ha you break it down to the moral conscience that you know that Christianity preaches that we are justified by faith alone. Good works come afterwards, but it's not of us. It is of Christ working within us. And then a true and authentic faith um, is a faith in response to the Spirit's work in our life, regenerating our hearts, taking our heart of stone and giving us a heart of flesh, a flesh that observes God's law and instead of hates god actually desires him and so that's um that's the message you bring it down break it down to and it's so easy you just keep saying well how you keep asking questions first and foremost if any if you don't realize or if you don't know someone that well you keep pressing in keep asking questions but ultimately um praying that the spirit's going to open their eyes the whole entire time and that you're just going to trust that his word is not going to return void and that it is going to go out and accomplish something and you know i think of Acts 17 uh, Paul uh, Areopagus preaching and he gets three responses right he gets three responses from the people he preaches to one some belief two some mock and three some ask him more questions and I think that's to be expected I think that's um that's where you kind of work from there but rather you can just go out with the word of God trusting that it is sufficient for your apologetic methodology and you don't have to have this extra biblical knowledge to be able to effectively share the gospel and witness to some people and so if you have anyone that believes in Norse gods if you have anything like that the call is to repent and turn to Christ and be forgiven and ultimately they're going to respond how they're going to respond that's okay but you you faithful christian you just did your job and you can't ask for much more anyway thank you for watching this short live stream we're about 25 minutes in um thank you so much for hanging in there uh, i hope this was encouraging if you have any questions please feel 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 free to email me worldusingconflict.gmail.com i'd be happy to dialogue with you um and answer any questions you have if for more resources on presuppositional apologetics i recommend just searching presuppositional apologetics on youtube listen to some lectures it's all free if you want to buy something Dr. Greg Bonson wrote a book on this um, called Presuppositional Apologetics. Um, and 
uh, I think it's the stated and defended is the kind of the sub cap caption of that book. And it, it's a, it's not a lengthy breakdown, but it's an amazing breakdown of, uh, this apologetic methodology that I believe is biblical and trust God. And obviously with any apologetic methodology, it could be abused, but, um, you know, don't throw the baby out with bathwater <laughs> is all I would say. And um, anyway, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I got more videos coming, more conversations with um, different worldviews, different belief systems coming up. If you are interested in hearing how I dialogue with these people, um, feel free to like, subscribe, all the rest there. It does mean a ton to me, especially as we're, our channel is so, so, so small. All right. Well, my name is Luke. Thank you for watching. God bless. I'll see you later.